Hello, Annette. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I am perfect. How are you? I'm wonderful. Of course, my phone rang just as you were bringing me on because that's virtual, right? That's the craziness of what we do. Anything I'm can fantastic. happen. Fantastic. I'm wonderful. I'm here in New York City. What's the time oh, there? I'm sorry. What is the time right now? It's two thirty. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. All right. So a good way to start the afternoon. Yes. All right. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you one thing, Annette. I've been really looking forward to meeting you in person because you strike me as a, a renaissance woman. Oh. A, yes, a person who knows how to do absolutely everything. And even if she doesn't, she knows the right people. Yes. Isn't that so? Well, that is true. That is true. I am a, a big connector in this industry. I've been in the industry for 30 years. So or more at this point. I think I just stopped counting at 30 years. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the key to being a successful event producer is, you know, re is having the resources, like knowing how to get the resources of what you need to get done. So um, yeah, and I used to run the Event Planners Association for the New York chapter in New York City. So um, when you run a chapter of an association, it's definitely, uh, you learn, you know, you meet a lot of people. And that was kind of the goal when I first started my business, basically, because I've had my business 11 years. So it's a whole nother animal when you're running your own business. I know that. I know that. I did my little research. And I'm going to ask you one thing, because I saw a video you produced, I think, like two months ago, in which you said that you absolutely hate recording yourself. And I call it a bluff. I think this is a blatant lie, because how can you dislike something that you are so good at? You're so sweet. Well, I've gotten much better. So when the industry, you know, we shut, everything shut down and in New York, you know, it's it's a mess right now. We still don't have restaurants open. So it's really, really, really sad. But when we first shut down, I, you know, had to figure out what to do. And I had to figure out, like I needed to get visible. And so I thought, all right, as much as you hate being in front of the camera, I'm a behind the scenes kind of girl you need to get in front of people and start talking about this. And I wanted to help my colleagues, you know, in the business because everybody was suffering. And I really, you know, felt like I need to try to bring our community together and bring, um, you know, professionals that are really thought leaders in our industry together and help people and, you know, with their businesses and what to do. So I, it's been a year now, which almost a year. And so I'm a little more comfortable now in front of the camera. So, <laughs> It's definitely changed, but anything you're uncomfortable with, if you keep, you know, doing it, you, it's second nature, just anything, right? So it's I mean, fun that you think back on those fears and uh, it, it's gone now, so. I mean, to call it a work in a progress is a huge misunderstanding because this is perfect, <laughs> basically. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we all know that we are all facing basically the same problems during the pandemics and uh, some of us uh, have more problems because restrictions are harder in some countries. But uh, where do I start if I want to host a virtual event? Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, the first thing you should do is, is find people who are professionals and know what to do. I mean, you really shouldn't try to go off on your own. Um, you know, we, when I first started talking about this, I, at first I thought everybody knew I was going to be doing virtual, like Paul mentioned, the previous speaker who was fantastic. That was a very, uh, a great, a great talk that he had. Um, he, you know, you, um, you have to get, you know, it's, there's, it is a, it is a different animal. It's different than going live and you get advice. So if you get, get someone who is, um, experience this area. Like he said, we've been doing a virtual live stream aspect to many of our events over the years. Not a lot of people ju jumped on that bandwagon, but we now have a lot. I'm doing a live event for the first time in a year uh, in Orlando. It's a three-day event and we have to follow all the procedures and it's, it's a little struggle. I just got off the phone with the hotel um, because we're now making the ballroom bigger and more breakout rooms and separating people more, which is kind of sad. But um, you know, you have to follow the social media, the social uh, distancing guidelines. And so, um, you know, it's you just really need to get with a team that knows what to do. And you know, an AV company is super, super important. You need to talk to a a tech team that understands 
the background, you know, the, the behind the scenes of this, the technology side of this, because it's, it can be expensive, it can be challenging, and it can be a disaster if you don't have the right team. As you mentioned, this is a totally different animal. We even said with Simon that the same, same, but different. Same, but different, yep. All right, so if I am, for example, an uh, event planner, how do I pivot from live to virtual events? Because it is not as easy no, as it may seem. Not. No, it's not, it's challenging. Um, you know, you just need to, um, I, what, how I really took, cause so we, like I said, we've done aspects of, of virtual, but I never really did, um, you know, a complete virtual event from the big registration piece all the way to the end and then guiding our clients through that. So there was a little bit of a different of an animal. So I just watched a lot. I'm sure everyone has been on a lot of virtual events at this point. <laughs> and so um, I want in the very beginning, I was jumping on a lot of virtual events and I spoke to my AV team partner with your with a great AV team, a tech team that can help you and advise you along the way. So when we first did the first live, I was with them. I was able to be with the team um, in uh, their studio. And so watching that. So once you do one, you sort of have it figured out. It's really just a matter of what type of platform that they're going to be using. Um, for the goals that they need to meet for the event. So really it's kind of the same. There may be some different tools added in that, you know, people want to add in some, you know, engaging, which is super important in virtual. You need to make sure that you have really great engaging things going on for everyone. Um, so, you know, to keep it entertaining, which is a lot different than if you're doing live, it's fun to have fun stuff. But the engaging piece of a virtual is important, especially if you're doing like a long day event or multiple day event. And people are, but you know, so my biggest advice is as an event producer, if you're not sure what to do, watch other events, take a lot of notes, what you liked, what you didn't like, and also partner up with a team of a tech team that can, um, you know, really guide you. So I get them on the phone with me whenever I get a potential client who wants to talk to me. I get uh, my tech team on the phone with me so that they can answer all of the tech questions. And then I learned from them. So I learned a lot of answers that now I can probably take a call and not, you know, and really talk about the tech side of it. Um, so just partnerships are really super important. There is a very nice saying, uh, African saying, that if you want to travel fast, travel on your own. If you want to get further, travel in a group. So true. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to take a minute to remind our viewers because I'm very lucky to have amazing speakers with mesmerizing uh, performances and I want to just remind you guys that you can ask questions. Feel free to ask questions if you want to get some information. If you want answers, just type them in and we'll, we'll try to answer them. Uh, all right. Uh, when should I start planning my virtual event? Well, you know, last year it took, I do a lot of fundraisers and it took, the boards just dis, were jumping on and corporates really sort of not kind of jumping on it right now either. They're, they're kind of, um, they're still going really slow with it. But so we only had like a month or two to plan these virtual events, which is really kind of insane because there's so much that has to be done. I mean, the sooner you can do them, the, the best. I mean, that's the greatest thing you can do. Um, you know, I have one that's kind of been talking to us for the last couple months and they're looking for April. So, I mean, really no less than two months, I would say, but if anything sooner than that, because there's still a lot of, you have to market it. There's getting all the, the tech together. You have to get your speakers and your sponsors and, you know, depending on what type of a, an event it is. Um, and, and just pulling all that information together, the videos, if you're doing pre-recorded or if you're going to do live, because there's still a lot of tech stuff that has to get done behind the scenes and, and the marketing is important. You've got to promote it just like you would a live event. Um, it's really not that much different as far as the marketing goes. So, um, you know, as soon as you can start, the better for us anyway. But, you know, we've, we've planned them quicker than, than we want to. But Would you consider planning uh, virtual events less or more difficult? Well... They're not as fun, I can tell you, as a, a live event producer, and I'm gonna to be totally honest here, they're not as fun, you know? It's 
it's kind of boring for us live producers who don't have a live platform. I like the hybrid piece of it. Hybrid is, in case somebody doesn't know, is a live aspect to the virtual. So you have a small amount of people in a live room, in a room that's live. Could be the speakers and you know maybe the MC, the host, or wh whoever. Um, and you just have a few people, and now we can only have a few people live, so that's kind of a challenge. But um, I, I just think it's. I'm, I'm sorry. Was it that? What was harder? I lost track of what you asked. Yeah. Which Which one is is harder. it harder or easier yeah. to organize? To plan to plan maybe this yeah, way. To plan. I mean, well, I just think there's more details when you have to go live because you have the food and beverage and you have the venue and you have, you know, there's a lot more things you have to bring to the event. And you've got to deal with all the attendees. So um, in that sense, it's it's easier. Um, but the tech side of it is a little challenging. You know, look, it's it doesn't take as long, but it, it's just not as fun. <laughs> I would say it may be also a bit less challenging because, for example, imagine creating such conference and gathering you all under one roof at the same time. Yeah. It is. So there are some advantages of virtual well, events. Definitely, great advantages. Sure. Right. So the advantages are is that you you can get a lot more people viewing the event that wouldn't come, you know, like worldwide, right? So you get a lot more of that. As far as the pricing goes, obviously, you know, even Paul touched on that. It's tech, the tech side of it can be, you know, can be expensive, but um, it can be much, you know, it, it, it is a different animal. I talked to with my, one of my clients, I think two days ago, and I asked the question, the question, like, is it like cheaper right now to organize? Uh, the, they were like, not really. It, it, it is quite pricey. It is quite pricey is, to organize a good, a good a virtual good event. event like this if you have to have the team behind the scenes that runs the technology the labor is what's expensive and the platform so if you're picking a really great platform like this one this is a great platform and this is you know guys it, these guys have done an amazing job um and just the the before you know as a as a producer and before the scene you beforehand and all of the organization of it has been really great but um you know, it's, um, you just have to, I forgot the, I got my train of thought again, sorry. Too many hours of working as a virtual assistant, as a virtual producer. So, um, we were talking about the advantages of uh, creating virtual events, such yeah, as, for no, example, the, the gathering price, people under right, one roof. Right, the pricing. It's, it can be, um, you, I have, I did a virtual, there were 13 people on the team. So, you know, 13 people, that's, that's a lot. The labor is expensive. And then the platform that you use, it depends. So if you're just going to do a Zoom, you could do it for free, but that's not going to look so great. Or you can get platforms that can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. So it just depends on what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish. Here, here. All right. Uh, I have a question from Andrew. Comparing to live events with reference to speakers rehearsals for virtual, when would you start, how often and how much time? Yeah. For example, allow more rehearsals for virtual? Yeah, so um, we like to, you know, obviously we need to rehearse. We have to check with the speaker to make sure that their setup's right, their lighting's right, their sound is right, their background's right. Things are, you know, they look presentable. We don't want speakers that are looking crazy. So, you know, we usually, uh, we usually get a meeting in a month before, and then we kind of do a tech check, you know, like a, a week before, and then we do a rehearsal a few days before, a day or two before. What about the marketing, for example, also? But is marketing is the same for virtual and live event? It pretty much is. Um, you know, it, it, it is pretty much the same. I, 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 we haven't done much different, even with marketing, what we're doing as producers and in my business, it's the same. You just, you know, you, you can reach when you're doing your Facebook ads, obviously, if you're doing ads of any kind, you can reach a bigger demographic. So um, it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we, the, the, ne yeah. the next question I have is also can also be asked to the organizer of this event, but I'm going to ask it also to you. Uh, how is online registrations, uh, registration implemented and managed? Because this is quite crucial for right. any event. Right, right. So what we've done to make it more interactive and to make it more engaging is we have a live registration piece. So they register online, right? They get they register in, in their on their uh, online 
And then we do a check-in, which is really a live check-in. So we do a Zoom and they have a certain, we give them a certain amount of time. So like Monday uh, from two to five, you can come into the live registration at check-in. We usually say check-in because if we say registration, they think that they've already registered. So we say check in. We want to give you, you know, talk to you about the platform, especially if it's a platform that you're not familiar with. Okay. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that we get them on. We talk about the platform, what they can expect, what time is the event, um, did you get your gift box? So you, you know, send them something in the mail. Um, but um, and then we, so they have a human contact with a registration person. So we try to keep that really uh, engaging and have that beginning before the event even starts the engagement is already there so we've, it's worked well it's harder to do when you have like thousands of people on an event you have to have a big enough team to manage that and you have to have enough time to do that but um not and not a lot of our clients have used it because they usually haven't had enough time to implement all of it so uh but it's a really great piece and it again it starts with the engagement Speaking of engagement, uh, any tips on things how to, to, to co incorporate to help the engagement? Yeah, so we've done some really fun things and... Um, I'm all ears because I'm very, very curious about uh, those yeah. things you implemented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, gamification is always fun. Um, games where they have to have their camera on. So that's one thing is, you know, you get people in, um, you know, engaging that maybe be on, on a camera and you've got a group with, with Zoom and stuff and their cameras are not on. Um, and you want, you, you know, you don't want to be the only one that's live. So <laughs> you want to get them engaged. Um, you can do some games where they have to have their camera on. Scavenger hunts are always fun. Um, quizzes. So there's this company called My Quiz and they uh, do these quizzes, which are really fun. Show and tell. So you have to kind of have them run around, find something and do this like whole, you know, show and tell sort of thing. Um, cash bonuses for having their video on. So if you if you can do that, that's always great. Um, we did a sangria experience with some drag queens, which was super fun. They are hysterical. You got my attention. Sangria experience yeah. with drag yeah. queens, yes? Right. So, yeah. So it was just a big interview. Yeah, I know. It was the funnest thing ever. They're the funniest guys ever girls guys whatever it is and um so you know we always we have fun with it and drinking is a big thing on, <laughs> on these parties too so dance parties you know when i first started doing virtual i thought oh gosh nobody's gonna get involved in these dance parties but when you showcase people dancing and you bring them like you you know you zoom into them they love to be on camera people just for some reason whether they want to be shy or not they love to be on camera so we've we've had some dance parties virtual bo photo booths, um, you know, Q and A's, any entertainment. So if you have an entertainment, like a musical group that's fun and interactive, that's always fun too. Um, you know, icebreakers, some questions and answers sort of thing, like trivia. Um, and then there's team building and giveaways and stuff like that. So those are, you know, some, some exciting things that we've done. Um, but it's, when I, what you gotta be you gotta be re really creative when it comes to virtual and the the comp there's a lot of companies doing stuff now so when we first started virtual there was hardly there wasn't a lot of people that knew what to do and how to bring what they do virtually but it's 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 changed a lot i mean when i asked this question i i had ex expected basically like three or four examples <laughs> you know, and, I, it's a lot of things that we've done so and it's absolutely amazing and i love listening to it and i love, I love hearing it because it's like like a magic box you just open your creativity and yeah. there it goes all right mm, uh, annette i have one question from christopher from Krzysztof. annette can you please share your biggest setback with organizing online event and the solution you've implemented so um the biggest setback, it doesn't happen that often, but you really need to make sure that you have good connections when you're running a virtual event. Um, my AV team is fantastic. Uh, sometimes, you know, it depends on the connections that we have. You gotta make sure that you have, you know, a, a great, and they're, they're uh, you know, they know the terminology of all this, but if you don't have the uh, enough Wi-Fi that's working properly or to run the virtual of it, you need to make sure that that hookup is is right. 
Um, we had an, a, a, something that happened. We were doing uh, lots. It was a two tracks, lots of speakers, and uh, it was a one day event. And there was a so when the speaker was speaking, the voice was coming on after. So it was kind of a delay in the like what they were saying and when it was coming through. Um, that was a Zoom glitch. So you just have to you know make sure that you the platforms you're using you know them. Um, but other than that, um, you know we're we've. We just have to make sure that you have people that know what they're doing and 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 have a good tech team because if it doesn't run good, it's not going to look good, and that's going to make the event not you know it's not going to flow right. You've got to have a good flow. That is so true. Uh, all right, we have. Oh, I can see that Pamela Benitez is a huge fan of uh, Drag Taste Portugal. He said, Drag, she said, Drag Taste Portugal, best ever. So if you ever, if you ever, once again, create such an event, virtual event, please do invite us. Remember about us because we're going to have a blast, I guess. We'll, me and Pamela Benitez. They're fun. They're fun. They're fun for sure. Uh, another one, another one from our viewers, Ndoye. Are there basic notions of virtual events tech that one should know, at least the basics, to supervise the tech team and make sure that they work well? Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to have a team that I can trust. You really need to know that you can trust them and they know what they're doing. Um, I have worked with these guys for a long, long time. So get make sure that they're highly recommended and they know what they're doing and you don't have to worry i never have to worry if there's a glitch they're going to fix it right away um so you know just making sure that you are, are picking the right team and it, it's it can be challenging and, and so you know just like with any event i have been doing this for years like i said in the beginning anything there's always something that's going to happen that you thought okay that's never happened before <laughs> and so you know, it's you just have to, you know, figure out what's plan B and C and glitches are going to happen and things that we, you know, we understand sometimes, you know, we've had, it's never happened to me, but I've been on events where we've lost the feed altogether and you just have to, you know, figure out what to do next. So always have some backup plans. That's super, super important. And we'll always work with the best. This is yeah. also very important. As I said, if you don't know how to do something, work yeah. with those who do. I know, and it, it might be more money to work with the best, but at the end of the day, because you can make money, you know, I've been doing events where you can make money from a virtual event. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean you're not going to make some money. And so, you know, spending the time and keeping people engaged and interested, if you're selling something from an event, if you're making an offer, make sure that you have a really good team that can help you look good as well and keep everybody engaged and they're going to want to buy from you. So you can make money. So it's, it's you know, you might have to spend a little more money, but you're going to make it on the back of end. They're going, to, they're going to save you money as well. So we don't want our clients spending thousands and thousands of dollars on an event if they don't need to. So we advise on, look, this is a, just because they have, let's say they have a hundred thousand dollar budget. That's not, doesn't mean we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars. We want to make sure they're getting the best value for, you know, not, and try to stay under their budget. I think this is the idea, old as the world. Basically, you have to spend money to earn money. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing right. a workshop right now. It's crazy. Next question from uh, Caroline. Carolina, uh, online events are our future or just a temporary solution? What is your opinion? I kind of think it's going to be much more popular than it used to be. I really do. I and I like of the you know even though. Um, my, and we tried to get people to do virtual, you know, we tried to say, you know, live stream, you can get a lot more money, people in, you can make some money from it. And most of them, it was the last thing that they would, they would always say at the very beginning of planning, we want to do a live stream. Okay, great. And it was always the last thing that they took off because they spent a lot of money on their event. So I think that people are seeing, do, you know, they're engaging in it now, they're seeing it. And I think that, um, you know, it's going to be a while till we're back to normal. Uh, at least another year. I, you know, I'm moving events again this year. We moved them from last year to this year, and now I'm moving again to 2022. Um, so, you know, I think that it's it's definitely going to be around. I was Paul was talking about that earlier, and I, I do believe that um, it's going to be around a lot longer. It, I think eventually it may fade out, but you never know where it's going to go. Who knows? We never thought we were going to be here a year ago. 
So since it's going to stick, it's going to it's going to uh, be around. How sh how long should a good virtual event be? Well, it really depends. So you know, it depends on what their goal is and what they're trying to do. So you know, my fundraisers, which are normally a four hour gala when it's live, are an hour at the most an hour and a half because you can't keep them engaged that long. And, you know, we want to get to the point, show about the foundation, um, you know, get something fun and entertaining in, in the middle, do the auction, the silent auctions, run the live, the paddle raise, and then some a little more entertainment, and then we're done. So, um, but I have events that are three days long. So, but they aren't as long as it would be like eight in the morning till six at night. We've kind of made them shorter longer breaks sometimes in the middle um and then you know it's just you you can't keep people's engagement that long but there are people that are doing them long so it's there's really not one answer to that uh, i like to try to make sure that you have a lot of fun things involved to keep them going that's the biggest thing i can say is the engagement is super important Great solution and great advice. Uh, we talked about uh, the team, uh, the co-workers. Mm, how big should a good team be? Yeah, so, you know, when our, some of our clients come to us and it's just them, that's hard to do. They need to have people in, in the back end to help them with their marketing, uh, their messaging, their all their emails, you know, they have to do a, a, an email chain of emails to get, you know, people there. Um, the, the graphic design, because graphic design is important when you're doing a virtual event because people are going to see. So there's a lot of graphic design that, that is involved in this. Um, and then the tech team is going to be probably a lot bigger. It just depends on what they're doing, you know, and, and how long is the event and, and all of that. And that's really um, but I think important having an event producer who knows what they're doing, who can pull everybody together, and then the obviously the tech team, and then depending on, um, you know, if you're, it just depends on the event. If it's a really big, you know, you, you need a team, you need people to help. You you need someone running the chat if, when you're live. You need, um, you know, an MC like yourself who's fantastic. By the way, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're doing a great job, and it's important to have someone who is. You know, you can't just like flop up and do something. You really need someone who's helping and having a, a host or an MC uh, is always great. It's always great. If you can do that, it keeps the engagement going. Everything so. you say is duly noted. I can hear, I can see that there is, a, oh, Annette is a superstar. You have the best team around you for sure. Yeah. That's, um, that, that's a basic statement from, from our chat. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. No, I, I do have the best team. I'm very, very lucky. And I'm always, you know, I'm not like, you know, I'm always looking for great people to work with. And so that's why I love, I love doing my live show, as you mentioned before, is because uh, there's so many great people out there who are helping everyone in this industry. So it's really great. Once again, thank you very much for spending your time, for being here with us. Uh, as I said before, I had been looking forward to meeting you and talking to you and this dream is fulfilled right now once again thank you very much stay with us because we have so many things more to come thank you thank so. you